skeletons, it is Disney Queen Skelly here, and welcome back to another Chatting Skeletons episode. So this episode is titled, Hubby Keeps Buying Board Games. Now, I'm going to go back to when quarantine first started, and he was pretty much stuck here for the two weeks that we initially thought uh, we were going to be closed for, but then ended up being longer than two weeks. So once we knew that the quarantine was going to be longer than two weeks, um, we started playing board games like Monopoly and Uno and all of that. But then we kind of started getting bored of all the games we had because we literally had repeated playing them like almost every night. So Hubby had asked me if it would be okay if he bought some more board games. I said, sure, why not? You know, it'd be a fun idea just to have something new in the house. So the first two games we bought was a game called Horrified, which is basically you defeating all the universal classic horror monsters, which would be Invisible Man, Frankenstein and His Bride, Wolfman, uh, Dracula... Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Mummy, you know, creatures like that. And then um, we got something called Lucidity. It's pretty much like your nightmares come to life type deal. Um, it's a dice game, so it's kind of all about strategy, like where you place, what you place, what you get rid of, you know, how many turns you take. And it was pretty fun. And then he wanted to get even more board games. So I was like, okay, uh, what do you want to get? So we ended up getting a game called Plunder, which is, he thought it was going to be like Battleship, but just with pirates instead of like naval boats. It ended up being so much more than that. It is definitely a strategy-based game where you have to get seven points in order to win. And it may not seem like a lot of points, but trust me, with how long it takes to even just get, you know, one point on your own, seven points is plenty. Then he ended up getting this Grim Fairy Tales book, or Grim Fairy Tales board game, which unfortunately we have not played. I really have no interest in playing it even though I did suggest it. I wanted to get this um, ghosts board game but it involved a Ouija board and it made him a little bit uncomfortable. So we got the Grim Fairy Tale game but I really have no interest in playing it so he's going to take that home with him and play with his cousins because you get to build stuff. I don't know. I just never really had the interest in playing. Um, I think that was the very last board game we had actually ever bought. However, every time we go out to like a um, place, like a like a place that sells board games, or every he, whenever he searches on Amazon, I'm like, you need to calm down with buying board games. We have no more room to put them in. But just recently, we actually got a card game called Shit Happens, and it's like you have like it, it, like literally, I was reading the directions on this thing. And it said that the people who created this game actually consulted, like, marriage counselors, psychologists, therapists, and they ranked these from 0 to 100 in terms of, like, how severe one might be affected by this mentally, physically. You, the way you start is you put three cards face up, and you, you have to have, you have, like, a, what was it, a um, trail of, I don't even remember, um, something of line of tragedy or a line of pain, line of pain, lane of pain. That's what it was. You have a lane of pain. So you have three cards face up and the person has to read you a scenario on a card and you have numbers on these cards. Wherever you think that lies on your lane of pain, you tell them if you're right, you get the card. If you're wrong, it goes around the table. If everyone gets it wrong, it gets discarded. It's a very simple game to play, even though the way I'm describing it is super complicated, but I recommend getting that card game. It is actually really fun. You can play it with two or more people and it is 18 plus, please do not buy it if you are younger than 18 years old. It is a very, very, oh my gosh game. There is like no filter on this thing, but I swear to God, guys, I know the board games are not going to stop because last time we went to Barnes and Nobles at the um, Irvine Spectrum, we actually found this game of death. It's literally like scenarios of how people had passed and it's like, you have to, I don't know if you have to rank them or what you have to do with them, but it looked like a lot of fun. It's shaped like a coffin, so hopefully it's there the next time we go, which hopefully, which I'm sure it will be, but, you know, I told them that the next time we're there, we have to get that one, and then I think the next time we go, we're going to get that lie detector test that we found, because we found an actual lie detector board game. He looks at me, he goes, do you have anything to hide? I was like, no to you. He goes, no. <laughs> Well, that is part of me feel like we're both lying. Anyways, uh, that is it for today's Chatting Skeletons episode. I know it's a shorter one, but I don't know. I feel like I'd had more to talk about in this, but we get used out of these board games. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it got to the point where our dice ended up wearing out in Plunder, so we had to buy more dice, and we had to buy um, a dice board, which is like something that you roll the dice on that doesn't damage the sides of them, which could actually mess up the rolling. So I recommend getting a dice board. It is actually very, very useful. Ours is red, and it's made out of felt. Super nice. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching this Chinese Skeletons episode. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. I love you guys.